This notorious convicted killer came back from the dead. Two months after burning to death in a South Africa prison fire, Tabo Bester, aka the Facebook rapist, is spotted in a fancy supermarket four hours away. For a dead guy, he was sure living his best life, tooling around town in luxury cars, playing house in a mansion with his celebrity doctor girlfriend, even taking business meetings in fancy restaurants. And that's just for starters. You've never heard a story as wild as this one. I guarantee Guarantee it. Catch the recap now before Netflix has the documentary. Welcome to True Crime Recaps, I'm Chris. Prison officials didn't share many details about the suicide. Before dawn on May 3rd, 2022, a fire broke out in cell 35 at the Mangaun Maximum Security Prison in South Africa. It took a little over 30 minutes to contain it. In the cell, they found what was left of a mattress. Under that mattress was a body. Face and hands were burned so badly you couldn't make out who it was. Everyone knew him anyway. Tabo Bester was in that cell. The headlines dubbed him the face Facebook rapist for the way he liked to find his victims. Pretty, young women with stars in their eyes hoping for a chance to be the next big thing. And there was Tabo volunteering to make their dreams come true. Among other things, he called himself an international model scout and he looked and talked the part. He was charming, handsome in his early 20s. He knew all the right things to say. So when he asked to meet up, who would say no? But instead of a camera and contract, his victims were robbed. Others were raped. He had 13 aliases that the cops knew about, and all 13 fake personas loved the soft life. I guess you could say he'd been a grifter his whole life. As legend goes, Tabo was showing off a stack of ill-gotten cash at age four, and he had a story all queued up to explain it. From there, it was one elaborate lie after another. Some were more successful than others, but you know what they say. Prison just makes you a better criminal. After getting off a three-year sentence for fraud in July 2011, Tabo broke parole and went back to doing what he loved. He booked a private jet for a fake photo shoot with a squad of models and photographers. When they sat down to the lunch Tabo arranged for them, he took off with all their equipment, laptops, and cell phones. And the jet company? They never got a dime. A month later, Tabo raped and robbed two models. A month after that, he stabbed his girlfriend to death at a guest house in Cape Town. 26-year-old Namfundo Tiulu fell for Tabo when she sold him a BMW in January of 2011. It was a long-distance thing. She lived in Johannesburg, he was in Durban, but they talked and texted daily. Then, on September 16th, Tabo suggested a trip. Namfundo had a little time off before starting a new job, so he flew her to Durban for some quality time together. From there, they went to Cape Town and checked into a guest house on September 21st. But the night didn't go as planned. They fought about the relationship until an exhausted Namfundo fell asleep. At about 2 a.m., Tabo slipped into the kitchen for a knife. He claims he was planning to take her phone and laptop and leave. But he ended up taking much more than that. Namfundo was awake when he came back to the room. They struggled for control of the knife and he stabbed her through the chest. He tied her hands behind her back and demanded the password to her laptop. At 7 a.m. on September 22nd, he left the room with his luggage, plus a couple of new things, Namfundo's phone and laptop. When the owner of the guest house spotted him on the way out, Tabo asked for a ride into Cape Town so he could catch an early flight. Before he left, he made sure to say his lady friend was still sleeping, so please don't wake her up. But when Namfundo didn't leave the room by 9 p.m. that night, the staff got worried and decided to unlock her door, only to find her cold body on the bed inside. For his crimes, Tabo got life plus 75 years in maximum security at Mangaun, the world's second largest private prison. The massive compound sits on the outskirts of Blomfontein in the Free State Province in South Africa. That should have been the end of Tabo's story, and for 10 years, Everyone thought it was, but everyone was wrong. Tabo spent his days running a handful of elaborate schemes from behind bars. Using the alias Tom Motsepe, Tabo claimed to be the chairman of 21st Century Media, an event and production company designed to look like it was part of 21st Century Fox. This scam makes the Fire Festival look like a harmless prank. More than 30 employees were lured away from other jobs to work for the so-called prestigious company. 
The fake Tom persona also had quite a story. He was a young, successful entrepreneur living in New York City. The company's launch event was held at a fancy hotel in Johannesburg in June 2018, and Tom made a video appearance from his office in New York, looking sharp in a pressed white shirt, vest, and tie. None of the elite guests knew he was actually talking to them from his maximum security prison cell. Among other alleged scams, 21st century media sold expensive tickets for a Women in Media gala. They promised Halle Berry and Taraji P. Henson would be guest speakers. When the celebrities denied knowing anything about it, the scam fell apart. It was just as well, Tabo had bigger plans and places to be. In May 2022, the Facebook rapist was back in the headlines after burning to death in his prison cell. But some observant prisoners noticed a few weird things about that fire. For one thing, it was too quiet. Tabo didn't make a sound when the flames broke out. Not even the prison guard seemed to be too worried about it. One guard was on his phone while the fire burned. For another thing, Tabo was a little too happy in the days leading up to the fire. He even told one inmate he'd be going away soon, but none of the top brass wanted to hear their crazy conspiracy theories. Turns out, they were right. Tabo Bester was long gone. Now, how did he pull off such an elaborate prison break? It's absolutely crazy, but to explain it, you need a little more context. Three days after the fire, Dr. Nandipa Magudumana claimed Tabo's body from the prison morgue. The 35-year-old, known as Dr. Nandi, seemed to have it all. Her cosmetic surgery company, Optimum Medical Aesthetic Solutions, was the go-to place for South African socialites in need of a little nip and tuck. Her Instagram had hundreds of thousands of followers, and she made it onto the Mail and Guardian's 200 Young South Africans list in 2018. Her personal life looked as glamorous as her social media made it seem. She was married to a successful pediatrician, and together they were raising two beautiful children in the lap of luxury. Then she reconnected with an old flame, Tabo Bester. The two of them first met in 2006 when she was in college. They kept up with each other for the next few years until they lost touch and she got married in 2013. When she rekindled her flame with Tabo in 2017, she turned into a regular visitor at the prison and she made sure his account was always full of money. When she came to get his body after the fire, she told officials she was Tabo's customary law wife. She took the body to a mortuary to have him cremated, but before she could, the police confiscated it and brought it back to the prison for more tests. It seems the autopsy revealed something strange. The man was dead before the fire started. So, what actually killed him? The autopsy report says it was blunt force trauma to the head. And even stranger, there was a distinct smell of paraffin on the dead man's trachea. This wasn't suicide. This was murder. The next woman to show up at the prison for Tabo's body said she was his mother. The two of them weren't close in life, but she heard about the fire on the news and wanted to give her son a decent burial. Except... Her DNA didn't match the body. So whose was it? Ketlego Barangs. No one had heard a peep from him since March 2022. Calls and texts went unanswered. Even his social media was quiet. It's not even exactly clear how he died. Some reports say the 31-year-old father of two collapsed in Bloemfontein and was taken to the hospital where he died. Others say he was hurt in a fight. But here's something else strange. He supposedly lived near one of the prison guards and the two of them were friendly, according to News 24. That same guard was later arrested for helping Tabo escape, but we're not quite there yet. First, you have to hear how Tabo pulled this whole thing off. From the hospital, Ketlego's body was taken to a government mortuary. On April 27th, six days before the prison fire, Dr. Nandy allegedly showed up at the mortuary to claim Ketlego's body. She had quite a story ready to go. She said he was her friend's brother's son. She was just there as a favor, helping out with the funeral arrangements. Bizarrely, a fake funeral was held later. When the police dug up the coffin, they found it filled with sacks of maize. And are you ready for this? Ketlego's body wasn't the only one the good doctor allegedly claimed. It was the third. But let's get back to the prison break. On April 29th, the TV cabinet was delivered to the prison workshop. Inside the cabinet was Ketlego's stolen corpse. The next day, one of the guards allegedly transferred the body to a garbage can and smuggled it in 
into cell 35, a single person cell that wasn't used much because cameras didn't have a great view of it. It also happened to be next to the fire exit. That same day, Tabo asked for and got a transfer to cell 35. Three days later at 3 a.m., his mattress went up in flames. Seconds before the fire broke out, two figures dressed as prison guards slipped out the door. The cameras in that cell block were mysteriously not working and the cameras around the exit were pointing the wrong way. Almost four hours after that, local police showed up to investigate. You would think that after pulling off such a wild prison break, Tabot would run as far as he could. But he only went four hours north to Sandin, an area in Johannesburg known as Africa's richest square mile. That's where he set up house in a lavish, rented mansion with Dr. Nandy and her two young daughters. The president of South Africa lived just down the road. It's fair to say Tabot wasn't keeping a low profile. Social media was churning with pictures of Tabot living his best life, tooling around town in luxury cars, shopping at high-end stores, and even allegedly conducting business meetings over Zoom. As the pictures made the rounds, his victims started demanding answers from police. Why did it look like the man who attacked and robbed them was still very much alive? The investigation went at a snail's pace. The rumor mill buzzed with theories, but no one really thought there was any chance Tabot had actually escaped. If that were true, it would be like something out of a movie, not real life. Meanwhile, investigative journalists from Ground Up Media got some leaked reports from the prison that led them to start asking questions about Tabot's strange death. Then, in March 2023, 10 months after the fire, Ground Up published a shocking headline. Did the Facebook rapist die in his cell? Or did he escape from prison? Now, this was one headline that couldn't be ignored. Major media companies started jumping on the story. Everyone wanted to know if Tabo Bester was really dead. All this attention was generating way too much heat for Tabo and Dr. Nandy to keep acting like everything was normal. March 15th, 2023 started like any other Wednesday. The doctor dropped off her daughters at school that morning, but... She never came back. The girls were left sitting there at the end of the day until someone called their father to come get them. Tabo and the good doctor were long gone. It took another 11 days before prison officials finally admitted what everyone already suspected. The Facebook rapist was alive and on the run. The hunt was on for the fugitive and his alleged accomplice. And you know what they say, you can run, but you can't hide. The lovebirds' honeymoon ended in Tanzania two weeks after they made a run for it. A private plane brought them back to South Africa and straight to prison. And they're not alone. Eleven others are charged with helping them escape, including Dr. Nandy's father, Zolio Sekalini. Before he retired, he was a senior official with the Department of Education in charge of planning curriculum and assessing local schools. No one could have predicted he'd be on trial for something like this. It's safe to say there were a lot of shocked families after the arrests started. Other alleged accomplices include the technician in charge of the CCTV cameras and several prison guards. Investigators say the guards were offered a lot of cash to play a part in the escape. At least Ketlego finally found his way back to his family. He was identified by his fingerprints and returned to his parents in April 2023. You can probably imagine how shocked they were to learn their missing son's body was used as a decoy by a notorious prisoner. And this wild story isn't over yet. The investigation into the escape continues and a trial is pending. Thanks for hanging out with me today. If you haven't subscribed yet, please remember to hit that button and the bell so you never miss a recap on this case and others. And that's your recap. Thanks for hanging out with us today. If you like getting all the crime in half the time, go ahead and tap that subscribe button and the bell so you never miss a story. We're here Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, but don't go away. Catch up on more recaps right here, right now. Until next time, take care.